So, let's get started. Hello, my name is Patrick Gurel. I am the head of product at FIRST, F-R-S-T. We are a blockchain intelligence and services company. What you're looking at here is actually a map uh, around the Binance treasury wallets. And I'll go through this here in just a second. But what I'd like to show you here is that we have six primary Binance wallets. They're the nodes here that you can see are denoted with the pink dots. And outside of those nodes, what you'll notice are these green and red nodes. And what we see is basically the withdrawn deposit structure of the exchange. The green nodes are actually the deposit wallets for their customers. We actually call these custodial wallets because these are the wallets that the exchange creates in order for a customer to deposit their funds. And typically, when you look at different exchanges, you'll see that, uh, especially on Ethereum, uh, that you'll use the same wallet for multiple types of tokens. This is basically something that uh, wallets use, or sorry, exchanges use in order to identify their customers. Uh, outside of that, these red nodes are actually the withdrawal wallets. And 87% of the time, these withdrawal wallets actually are the custodial wallets of other exchanges. So what you're seeing are basically customers taking funds out of one exchange and depositing it into another. So it's really nice to kind of map this out. We're looking at the top thousand wallets uh, outside of each one of the primary exchange wallets. And what you get is a really good idea of what kind of activity happens outside of the exchange during the day. And as this goes on, what you'll notice is that these wallets will actually change in their colors as they go from being deposit wallets to withdrawal wallets, depending on what kind of activity is happening. What's really nice too is you can see that there's 4.51 million inbound depositing wallets or custodial wallets, and there's 2.24 million outbound or withdrawal wallets. In, all, in total, out of these six primary wallets, there's about 26.39 million transactions. This also includes internal treasury functions where they're rebalancing their wallets. And with a total volume of 112.61 billion inbound, outbound, or internal transactions. And what's really nice is I can actually go through and look at different exchanges. This may take a little bit of time to load, but if you look at, for example, um, one of the larger exchanges, or sorry, another exchange like Poloniex, which has 20 different wallets, this will take a little bit of time to load, you'll notice that Poloniex actually has a wallet structure that's a little bit different where they have different tokens depositing into different treasury wallets. And you'll see that they have 20 wallets in total that they use in order to balance their exchange. So you'll see a different map of wallets begin to pop up here. And you can actually tell and see what kind of activity is happening outside of Poloniex. So let's give this just a second to render. And what you'll notice here is that you have a lot of wallets uh, associated to Poloniex. As you can see, it's kind of a mess, but these wallets all denote different kinds of things that are happening. So here's ETH wallet, here's ETH deposit wallets more ETH deposit wallets. This looks like their 0x primary wallet. This looks like a whole mess of different things that are coming in, probably mostly ETH. And you can see uh, this wallet over here is mostly for OMG, another one right here for BAT, another one for storage token. Uh, we've got some more 0x, and then it looks like some Augur, some REP, and BNT. So this is a great tool, obviously, to just try to figure out what is happening outside of the exchange also. Um, you get a good idea of what's happening um, beyond other exchanges because we can connect these together. So one of the things I wanted to show you real quick is actually the easiest way to spot funds that deposit into these exchanges. So one of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this big filter here. And we're going to jump back to Binance real quick. And you can see I have about 75 different exchanges uh, of data as I scroll down here in just a second. We'll let this re-render, give it just a moment. taking a little bit longer than expected. Here we go. Okay, so what you'll notice is that if I go back to Binance, let's say, Binance is an extremely exciting wallet, uh, exchange wallet cluster to follow. One of the things that you can do that easily lets you kind of figure out who the big actors are is literally just filter the exchanges by the total amount of large deposits that come in, or you know, just looking for large depositors. So what I did was I just filtered out all the transactions that belong to Binance that are more than $10 million. And what I begin to see is that here's a list of transactions 
you'll see that these wallets here are the from and to wallets. And then what we have is the proximity to the Binance primary wallets. So if you see Binance zero to Binance zero, that's just a Binance readjusting their primary holding. So it's going from one primary Binance wallet to another primary Binance wallet. But if I scroll down, all of a sudden I begin to find wallets that are not Binance wallets. And you can see that there's wallets that are depositing $19 million worth of Ethereum, a lot of BNB here, a lot of USDT, Tether going into the exchange. So these are your large depositors. This is the easiest way to spot funds because only funds really typically move around that much uh, volume or that much value. And if I go to the next page, all of a sudden you begin to see who the large withdrawers are. So you get a really clear idea of who these large wallets are. And then it's really easy to track these guys from here on out. What you can see is that basically most of these guys work with different exchanges. You can begin to connect their cold wallets. You can begin to look at their historical activity. It's really nice. Another really cool feature is being able to actually take a deep dive into what these wallets details look like. So I'm gonna take a look at this wallet details page and I'm gonna get a good idea of how active this wallet is. This is a primary Binance wallet. And as you can see, this wallet is really active. It's got a lot of activity. These are 24 hours of the day with the seven days of the week across the left-hand axis. And then I look here and I actually get a good idea of how much volume, or sorry, how many different wallets it's interacting with. This is just a roll up of the most recent wallets, but you can see that this wallet distributes out to quite a few wallets. But what we notice here is in the entire roll up, since this is an active exchange wallet, that there's 3.47 million wallets that deposit in and only about a million wallets, uh, sorry, there's 3.47 million transactions in with about a million wallets depositing and about 616 wallets withdrawing. And then just below that, I actually get a history of all the tokens that have ever touched this wallet. So this is also really nice because it's not just the current holdings, it's the entire history of wallet or tokens that have basically interacted with this wallet. And then below that, I get another map of different exchanges that this wallet has worked with. So this is really good because I can now begin to predict if I see volume coming in from a specific uh, wallet, the likelihood of it going out to another exchange is really easy for me to calculate. So here's a list of all the other exchanges that are within proximity of this primary Binance wallet. And the reason that we think that this wallet's so well connected to other exchange wallets uh, by one hop is because of airdrops. And um, uh, the fact that uh, Binance also launches IEOs. So if you dig a little deeper, what you'll find is that uh, tokens get distributed out to other exchanges. That's how they create market volume. So it's really interesting to follow the different exchanges that interact with specific wallets. I'm going to go back to exchanges real quick. And we're going to take a look at, uh, again, I'm going to filter out large transactions. Oh, so we go filter out transactions more than $10 million. In fact, actually, let's do something a little bit different. Let's go 100 million, a billion. So there was a lot of talk recently about a uh, billion dollar Bitcoin transactions, but a lot of people don't realize that BNB five months ago actually did a $2.2 billion transaction to a cold wallet. So it's not a primary treasury wallet of the exchange, but what they did was they actually moved, uh, I think it's close to 84% or 85% of the total BNB tokens right before they launched the BNN chain into a cold wallet, which is a major uh, cause for concentration. So we could see that they were slowly building up their concentration of BNB over time. And then we witnessed them deposited into the single wallet. So again, what you're looking at is, you know, major concentrations of value leaving the exchange. This wallet obviously belongs to Binance, but when you're looking for other funds, you'll notice that these wallets are dealing with a lot of different tokens. So this is a really easy heuristic to find and spot and follow funds. Um, it's probably the most basic non-programmatic way to do it. So again, this is Patrick from First. Again, I hope this is a, a neat little version of insight for you guys to take uh, and have a good day. I'll talk to you later.